and thank you just trying to get the video panel excellent thank you for the introduction can you hear me okay you're a little quiet we've we've still got ben's picture up there rather than you at the moment got your video on uh, yes. Can okay. you see that okay? Um, I can see your slides okay, but your volume is a little quiet. Okay, if I if I come closer to the microphone, that might help a little bit. Okay. Right. That's brilliant. Right. I'm that sounds go good, away. yeah. Thank you, Sophie. Excellent. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Sophie Dixon. I'm a visual artist working with film and immersive technologies. I'm also the co-founder of a company in the UK called Nemesine. And today I'm presenting Grace, a virtual recreation of the story of Grace Darling. And Grace is a film about Grace Darling, who became one of the greatest female celebrities of the Victorian era. It exists as both a single screen film and a three screen installation and has been commissioned by the RLNI Grace Darling Museum, Arts and Heritage and Arts Council England. So the film has been shot entirely within a games engine. And in this presentation, I'd like to focus on the use of 3D digitization for filmmaking, storytelling using museum and archival collections and computer generated filmmaking. And here you can see a few extracts from the film, which is 10 minutes in duration. So to begin with, I'll provide some context about the commission. Grace Starling was the daughter of a lighthouse keeper. From around the age of 11, she lived in Longstone Lighthouse in the Farne Islands, uh, Northumberland. And on September the 7th, 1838, when she was aged 23, Grace Starling rode out in a storm with her father to rescue survivors from the SS Forfarshire, a paddle steamer which had run aground approximately half a mile from their lighthouse home. And the story goes that she sighted the wreck from her bedroom window in the lighthouse and insisted that her and her father risk their lives to rescue the nine survivors. And following this event, she was hailed as a heroine and became nationally and internationally famous. And the status of heroine quickly became one of celebrity and her quiet life living in her remote lighthouse home changed forever. Visitors came to her home to request her signature, locks of her hair, snippets of her clothing, and her name and her image were used to sell commercial products from soaps to chocolates to poems and plays. And she died in 1842 from tuberculosis at the age of 26. However, her legacy lives on. So the story of Grace Darling has made its way into plays, songs, books, films, and Cunningham describes Grace Darling as existing in the realm of memory, in which her symbolic status has a capacity to metamorphosize and is likely to mean very different things to different generations. And Grace is the result of a commission to create a contemporary interpretation of this story, an artwork for the RNI Grace Darling Museum in Bambra, Northumberland, which you can see here. And the museum is located just next to the house that Grace Darling was born in, just up the road from where she, she died. And it looks out across her final resting place and beyond to the Farne Islands. And the film will be installed at the museum this September. So in the early research stage of the project, I visited the museum to hold workshops with the museum's volunteers. And the aim was to better understand her story and to discover the museum's collection. So in the workshops, we established the key events in Grace Darling's life, and then explored the people, places, and objects within the collection which connected to her story. And the key events that we identified were her childhood, so life on the islands, uh, the night of the rescue, the storm, and then her subsequent fame and death. And from the workshops and early stage research, different themes, sounds, objects, and moods were identified for each of the stages in her story. And there are many books written about Grace Darling, and during my research, I read as many as I could get hold of. Uh, but there was one book in particular which really influenced the direction of the work, and that was the true story of Grace Darling, written after Grace Darling's death in collaboration with uh, Thomas and Darling, her older sister. And the book, 
which includes previously unpublished family papers, was written with an intention to set the story of Grace Darling straight. So Thomason sets out to remove the glamorization of romanticism often associated with her sister's deed and presents her as an ordinary woman who was doing what would have been expected of her. And the quote, Grace never felt men owe her anything. She never thought of herself in connection with her deed. Her troubles came from the fact that the world thought of little else opens the film. So the letters written between Grace Darling and her family, they help us to hear her voice, to recognize her as a young woman going through a dramatic change in her life from being an unknown lighthouse keeper's daughter to an international celebrity. And within these letters are glimpses into the family's opinion about her fame. Her father writes, you can hardly form an idea how disagreeable it is for my daughter to show herself in public. And there's a sense that the fame which dominated her life wasn't always welcome. And these letters were used alongside newspaper extracts to form the script for this film. Early on in the project, I chose to set the film in Grace Darling's home on Longstone Lighthouse. And I wanted to create a story world based on her life as an ordinary woman. And I wanted to use the intimacy of home of the lighthouse to connect audiences to her story through objects, through the environment, her letters, and angle the mirror away from this popularized image of her rowing selflessly out at sea. To form the narrative, I took an approach which I've used in previous works, which is where I've used real life interviews, uh, or in this case, written testimonies, and then use those texts verbatim to form a script. So I took a linear storyline of her life from childhood to death, and then use the testimonies to communicate the thoughts, feelings, and impressions of Grace, her family, and the public throughout her life. And my aim wasn't to tell the story of her life, as that's what the museum already does so well, but rather I wanted to create a poetic treatment and leave space for interpretation. So the concept is that as the viewer moves through the lighthouse, they move through the story of Grace Darling's life. The camera moves slowly through the main room, which is representative of her childhood, then up to her bedroom, where we hear about the night of the rescue and see the window from where she sighted the, the wreck of the SS Forfarshire. The top room uses a large number of painted portraits to communicate her experience of fame. And then finally, the camera moves up to the lamp a metaphor for the media spotlight, which leads towards her death and out again into the night sky. Sound is integral to the work and the script is integrated into an original score created in collaboration with Berlin-based musician Kathy Abricci. And we drew inspiration from this item within the museum's collection. It's a music book written by Grace Darling's father, a violinist whose music would fill the lighthouse. Kathy and I both have roots in the region of Northumberland and we both play the violin and this item from the collection formed the basis of our concept and collaboration. And we se selected a number of um, handwritten folk tunes and then Kathy wove these into a score. The music incorporates the script which is read by a number of voice artists and to obtain these recordings we work closely with Actors Forge, an organisation based in the northeast. As mentioned, the film takes place entirely inside Grace Darling's home on Longstone Lighthouse. So before I could start making the film, I needed to build the virtual environment. And the lighthouse is located off the coast of Bambra in the outer Farn Islands. Today it's open to the public, but what struck me is that out of season when the sea is rough, uh, it's, it's a fairly difficult location to get to. I made a trip early on in the project with the intention to get a feel of the place and to gather reference images. The lighthouse today is fairly empty, so it's very much a shell rather than this home that I wanted to use for the film. And as I had a limited time, I took 360 reference images to ensure that I could capture as much as possible on that trip. I also contacted Trinity House Archives and received early floor plans so that I could recreate the lighthouse as it would have been when Grace Darling was living there. I used 3D modeling software, in this case Blender, to model the lighthouse based on the reference images and floor plans. And the aesthetic that I wanted was that of realism. 
but I use the term recreation rather than reconstruction because there is a fair amount of artistic license here. It's a creative project. There's very little reference to how the interiors would have been. This was my main reference image uh, drawing by H.P. Parker showing rescued survivors from the Forfarshire warming in front of the fireplace at Longstone. So an early concept was to take items from the museum uh, identified during the workshops and digitize them, contextualize them and use them as props, as objects for storytelling inside the film. So objects such as this, the Darling family cot, which would have been used by Grace Darling's parents. And I scanned this object and several others from the museum using photogrammetry. Now photogrammetry is a process where you take hundreds of standard photographs and then you run them through a software to create highly accurate 3D models. Um, and this is a photo taken at the museum before the pandemic. This is a model of the um, cradle created through the photogrammetry process. And then once those models are created, I was able to bring them into Blender and then later into Unity game, Games Engine. And here you can see the main room with Grace Darling's uh, cradle in situ. And there are other objects in the film, such as Grace Darling's sewing box, which you can see here on top of the chest of drawers. And her clock, which, you, which she would have heard ticking in her bedroom uh, in the lighthouse. And that's been recreated here and situated into her room. And the sound of that clock is integral to the soundtrack. The bust of Grace Darling held at the museum had previously been scanned by the RNNI, so I was able to get a copy of the scan and apply textures and again add it to, to sit within the film. And due to the pandemic and the museum closing during production, I wasn't able to digitize quite as much as I would have liked. Um, so there are objects in the recreation that are hand modeled using reference images and where possible image textures from items in the collection. And this is her writing set modeled using reference images. And you can also see letters from the Northumberland archives on the desk. Other objects in the lighthouse were based on extensive research. So looking at the type of furniture, domestic items, which would have been found in that region at that time. And those were hand modeled, for example, a copper kettle and an hourglass. But there are also models which are inspired by fictional texts or descriptions describing the house, um, such as this one. So shells and bird's eggs inspired by Constance Medley's imagined idea of Grace Darling's bedroom. And so in the end, this virtual world, it becomes an amalgamation of different interpretations, different layers of fact and fiction. And the story itself exists in the soundtrack, in the auditory narrative, but it's also very much embedded within this virtual space. So models and materials were prepared in Blender and Substance Painter, but the dynamic aspects of the world, for example, uh, the lighting, the sea, the sky, all of these were added using Unity. And I'm fascinated with roaming cameras or films which give the illusion of a single or limited number of takes. And so I took inspiration uh, from films such as Russian Art by Alexander Sokorov and Chantal Ackerman's uh, Hotel Monterey. And the camera in Grace moves through the space, examining objects slowly and feeling its way through the story. And using Unity Cinemachine, which is a set of tools for creating dynamic cameras inside Unity without code, I was able to use dolly tracks and carts for the camera. And you can see uh, one track here in green. And this is uh, from the early charted section of the film when the virtual world is set to dawn and there is a soft, uh, warm color grade. And then later, as the camera winds its way up through the lighthouse, we enter into the later stages of her life. And here we transition to night and colder hues. And here you can see a sped up version of a single camera which winds around the bedroom, the top room, uh, winds around the lamp and out into the sky. And this is, it's one continuous take moving through uh, different times of day, different camera settings, different depth of field and different color grades. The bedroom section is where the viewer hears about the night of the storm and I wanted this to be experienced as a memory, so something which had happened in the past and so used projection to display it above the bed while you hear a voice recalling the night of the storm. 
And to do this, I used reference images to model the Cobol, the boat that Grace Darling and her father used the night of the rescue, and then filmed the scene outside the lighthouse at night. And then I projected that film into the bedroom using a projector, just as one would if using a physical set. In terms of cinematography, natural light and lamps were used to illuminate the rooms. And I wanted to ensure that lighting levels and camera settings were physically accurate. So to keep things looking as realistic as possible. In Unity, the cameras followed the same principles as physical cameras. So I was able to set the ISO, shutter speed, aperture, just as one would in the physical world. The images and clips that I've shared today are taken from the single screen version of Grace. Uh, the free screen version uses the single screen version for the central screen. And then two secondary screens to the left and right show different perspectives, including close ups of the objects in the rooms. And this is to give an increased sense of immersion and reveal new details and layers to the story. And these mock ups give an impression of, of how the film will look when it's installed at the RLNI Grace Darling Museum this September. Uh, thank you very much for listening. Um, if you'd like to find out more about the film and the installation at the museum, please get in touch. And I'll also be sharing uh, updates about the project and a dedicated website via Twitter later this week. So I'd be very happy to answer any questions now in the Q&A. Well, 